Good morning Komodians. In today's video we're going to cover how to create a block explorer for your Komodo smart chain. If you haven't created a smart chain yet you can check out the first video in this series uh, linked in the description. And installing the block explorer isn't too difficult uh, thanks to the work done by Decker and Jicharang. We'll just uh, use this simple repository follow the steps from the readme uh, and it really should only take us about 10 minutes. So the first thing we want to do is to stop our smart chain. I'm using the rock smart chain that I created in the last tutorial. The reason we're stopping the smart chain is because as we run through the installation of the block explorer uh, some parameters in the conf file will be changed and we'll need to restart the chain with a re-index so that those additional parameters will take effect. So once we've stopped the smart chain we'll just uh, clone that repository onto our server and enter the folder that it's in and we've got a very simple script here which will grab all the dependencies and set up everything that we need to run the explorer so again just a simple copy paste the setup explorer directory shell script We'll have to enter our sudo password so that we can open the correct ports and install the correct dependencies. And this will take two or three minutes, so chance to go grab yourself a coffee, pat the dog. Once that's finished, you'll see that there's a subdirectory called node modules that has installed all the dependencies. And the next shell script We'll give it a parameter that is the name of our smart chain. It will detect our conf file, modify it accordingly, and prepare our chain for usage on the Explorer. So before we run this one, we'll just have a quick look at the existing conf file as we set it up in tutorial one. And you can see there we've got our RPC user password port, uh, a few other bits and pieces and we added the pub key and add node to the bottom and now we'll run that install asset chain explorer script and once that's done we'll have another look at the conf file to see how it was changed so as you can see it's removed our pub key and add node parameters and it's added a few extra ones which allow it to communicate with the explorer uh, and also a few parameters which store more information about the blockchain on our local drive. And now that that script has completed we'll just open up and edit the conf file again so that we can re-add our pub key and add node. and then we'll save and exit. That last little script created a folder specifically for our Smart Chains Explorer, including a script which will start the Explorer for us. And now we are ready to launch our Smart Chain again, but I won't use the launch script just yet. I'll just copy the launch string and we'll put dash reindex at the end, and that'll update our chain data with the extra information such as the address index, timestamp index, etc. which is used by the block explorer to display more information about what has been happening on the chain. Now if you're doing this on an established chain that has been running for a while, a re-index might take some time, but because I only just created this smart chain a couple of days ago, the re-index should complete in less than a minute. Next we'll have a look at the rock-web access file which tells us where we need to go to have a look at the explorer and you can see there that's uh, the IP address of the server that I'm using and the port that has been assigned for the explorer and now that we have that we will launch the explorer with the rock-explorer-start script. There you go. So we can copy that URL from the web access file, head back to our browser enter it in and there you go we've got a block explorer by default the block explorer will reference komodo all over the place so there is a little bit of extra customization to be done i'll show you a couple of simple customizations to begin with 
Uh, but you can go much further with customized CSS uh, to change the color of elements and any other creative changes that you may have in mind. The files you need to tweak in order to implement some customization are under your Chain Explorer node modules, insight-ui-komodo public folder. First one we'll have a look at is in the JavaScript. So you can see we have a, a main.js and a main.min.js. The Explorer will use the minified file, so I'll just open that up. Unfortunately, this file is all squashed together, so it's not really nicely readable for humans. But one thing that we can do is copy it all, except for the comment. And we've got a few minifier and unminifier tools you can just search for online. Just copy it in there, hit unminify, and you can see it's all nicely laid out for us now. And we can copy that again, head back to our editor and paste it back. So you can see at the top here we have the net symbol variable, which is set to K and D at the moment. And that is used as the default currency, which is why when we have a look on the Explorer page, we have KMD at the top here. And we also have it after any amounts that have been transacted. So I'm just going to change that to my chain, which is rock. And I'll save that file. And now if we exit and restart the Explorer script and reload this page, you'll see now that everything is counted in rock. The next thing you might want to change is the logo up the top here. And that is located in the public image folder. And it's named logo.png. And if we open that up at the moment, we'll see the old Komodo logo there. So I'm just going to copy one that I created myself and overwrite that one. And again, once we've updated that file, we can stop and restart the Explorer refresh our page and now my logo is in effect you might also want to change things like the background or text color and all of that is defined within the CSS files which we can find in the public CSS folder and again these are minified files so I'll just open up main.min.css and to make it a little bit easier to work with, again, I'll copy the bit that is not a comment, head on over to a unminifier, hit the unminifier button, and there we go. We've got nice, beautiful, human-readable CSS. And I'll just replace that in that file there. To find out the name of the element you are trying to change, most modern browsers support something like inspect. And with that, we can have a look at the code that has created the page. And if we click on a specific element, it'll highlight down there. It'll tell us which CSS styles have influenced the color, the size, the font, and so on of this element. So for example here, uh, if I was to change that font size, see what it looks like. Or perhaps I want to change the color get the uh, hex value down the bottom there and it tells me that this is defined in that main.min.css file and it also tells me which selector within that file will need to be edited. Any edits that we've just done while we're in this identify view they'll not persist if I was to reload the page again it'll go back to default. This is just a handy little tool that we can test things out with see what maybe a different uh, background color would look like and, and how the contrast goes against the text. But if we actually want to make that change permanent, we'll have to change it in that main.min.css file. So for example now, if I want to change the main background to something a bit darker, we'll copy that hex value there. 
You can see it's the body selector that I'm looking for. So I head back to my main.css file. So we can see the body selector here, although that doesn't have a background color declaration. So we might just have to have a look further into the CSS file. And there we go. You see that we update it with our value, save the file, stop the Explorer, restart it, and then refresh this page. And you can see that now that change is permanent. And from here, it's just a matter of rinse and repeat, update the elements that you want to change. And once you're happy, you'll have a fully functional, customized block explorer. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. In the next tutorial of this series, we'll show you how to set up an Electrum server before we can list our new coin on Atomic Dex desktop.